Hello everybody, I am Julia. This is Julia at Home. In this video, I'm going to be talking about artistic pursuits, which is an art curriculum, and I'm going to be focusing on their programs for kindergarten through third grade, uh, because that is the ages I have and what I have experience with. So let's dive on in. I have volume one and volume two of this series. There are eight books in this kindergarten through third grade range. It's designed to be done two books a year, over four years, um, but they do come in eight individual books, so you can pick and choose as you go. Um, I have volume one and volume two here that we've been working through this year, and I will get into how exactly we're using them. I'm not using them um, exactly as they're designed, so I will, I will get to that a little later in the video. Stay tuned. So they come with a book, then you can also buy a kit of art supplies to correspond to that book if you would like, and it just has everything you would need for one child for that entire book. I've always done some art with my children, but this is my first year actually using an art curriculum and I really liked this one. I did I did find it because I was looking for something to do for ancient art and their volume two here, this one is Art of the Ancients. And so I, I found it when looking for this, but I also picked up volume one, which is just a general overview of art and kind of introduction to art for children and then they go and then this series goes through various time periods in different areas of the world um, so I really like that so especially if you are somebody doing um, classical curriculum or even Charlotte Mason this is really great to tie into your studies what I want to do now is show you the inside of the books because I always like seeing that and then I'll show you some of the supplies we have we have been using them so I'm gonna see uh, I'm trying to collect them all into one place here so that I can show you what we got. These are the two books I currently have, Volume 1 and Volume 2. Let me start with Volume 1 here. This is Art for Children and Building a Visual Vocabulary. So this is a really good starting point. The book itself is hardcover, good quality. I really like that. It just, it feels good. And it actually comes with a DVD. So there's a DVD and a Blu-ray, so depending on how you want to play it, um, these both are the same things on it, and there are lessons in here that utilize the videos, which my kids love. So volume one here, you can see here's our list of contents, and it has um, videos every couple lessons, and then the lessons go through um, different ways artists might uh, view the world, so um, that they compose, they imagine, they observe, they communicate, they see shapes, they see form, they see texture, see landscapes. So it goes through, again, an overview of art. And it does this in several different ways. What I, one of the things I love about this program, I'm going to come back to this in a minute, is, so you have, okay, well, this one's not a great example. Let's start with lesson two. Um, most of the lessons have art that they have your children observe and then it has pictures for you to look at. So it's really a picture study and then after looking at that and after um, there's also an introduction here so this is talking about artists compose and this is something I just read to my kids it's designed for it's designed that way that you can read it to them. I suppose if they were older they could read it to, your, to themselves but I think this is a great activity to do um, as a family or as a group. Um, so you read them this part and then we do the picture study portion of it. This one happens to be um, from the Netherlands and uh, we talked about what we saw, the girl in the yellow skirt stands out and that it looks through the house and all different things that you can talk about here. And then it gives you a project to do that uh, coordinates with that. So this project is to paint a picture, something you've seen today or saw yesterday in your home. And this is using the watercolor crayons and um, I kind of skipped over but lesson one here was a video lesson on how to use the watercolor crayons where they got to choose their own object and practice using them. So this is how most lessons go. Here we have artists compose, artists imagine, so talking about imagination and it always has these prep notes at the beginning for the lesson as well which is super helpful as the teacher um, if you're outside the home environment which you might want to do. Um, so this is clearly designed with homeschoolers in mind, but I think would also work well. I think it would work especially well in a co-op form. There's a variety of ways that they, it could be used. I, I don't see why you couldn't use it in a classroom. You would want like to print out, I think, a bigger image or maybe multiples of um, this image here. But I don't see why it couldn't work in a, in a classroom format. 
identifying mixed colors. So this again is a video lesson, it tells you up here. I'm just gonna try to flip through this for you so you can see. And what's great about doing this, you can really do this for multiple levels. So again, I'm doing this with actually a first grader and a preschooler, so he's not even in kindergarten yet. He's four, almost five, so this is what I consider his junior kindergarten year. And he, each child is able to do the art based on their ability. Um, so there's nothing, you're not gonna mess it up, you're not gonna do it wrong. This does give you steps to follow and um, things to um, emulate. But again, we're not, you know, we're not expecting the five-year-olds looks like this, we're not expecting it to look like this, right? So um, this, this is one of the things I love about doing art in the homeschool environment, especially. It's one of those subjects that you can really all all do it together. And when possible, I actually like to sit down and do art with my children. Uh, it's a little harder with a baby uh, these days who is moving around a lot and needs a lot of physical attention. But when I can, I do sit down with them and do art because I think it's so good for everybody. So you can see this is self-portrait at the end. So it has objectives in the back. Uh, there's a shapes template for one of the lessons there. So you can tell there's just a lot of good stuff in there. The thing I wanted to come back to here is that you're doing art, obviously you need materials, um, and it has a list of what you need here, and you can buy a starter pack to go with this book. And so I did that, and um, I'm gonna show you, I actually got some of this stuff. So you can, you can see the picture here, obviously, but um, the watercolor paper, I have to say, um, I, I've already, this was the watercolor paper I used um, already, so I actually already had some, uh, so it's always nice to get another, <laughs> another book of it. And then um, this is really good quality construction paper. We haven't done the folding ones yet, so we haven't used it yet, but compared to the construction paper that I had, this is actually really, really good quality. And then a sketch pad. These are some of the other materials it comes with. Now, one thing I wanna say is, I recommend using this if you have multiple ages. However, it only comes with a starter pack with um, supplies for one child. So the question is that I asked myself when purchasing it, do I need a second kit for my second child? And my answer would be, it depends. So there are some things here that I just have my children share. I have them share the pastels and the watercolor crayons now if you have more than two children you might want like one set of these for every two children that you have because it does get a little um you know it gets a little hard to share after a little bit um we haven't used these yet but i think this is plenty because you could break this into pieces it has one paintbrush and one uh, pair of child scissors and um, the glue is shareable and and such but i actually because i was already doing art with my children and it's always been a priority for me I already had another set of children's scissors and a bunch of paintbrushes. So for me, I decided to go ahead and just get the one kit and that has worked out perfectly fine for me. And then I figured if I needed additional materials, I can purchase those specific materials separately and that I didn't need the entire kit. Moving on to volume two, this is Art of the Ancients. I love how this goes through history. So let me show you again what's inside. Again, they all come with these DVDs with lessons in them. And so the lessons aren't, the video lessons in this aren't as much about the history as about how to use the materials you're going to use in the other lessons. So just a heads up on that. So this is Art of the Ancients. So it goes through ancient times. Uh, it, go, it starts with cave age, cave age drawings and then goes through uh, Roman early Christian. Um, they do acknowledge this really focuses on the Mediterranean. So it really doesn't get into, you know, like ancient China or Japan or ancient Africa other than Egypt um, or any of that. So if you want um, that, you can pull that in, which is some of what I've been doing, but this is worth it for just what it has. Um, again, you can see there's video lessons. This one's on pastels, on slab building. So these skills will then be used um, in, the, um, in the later lessons. And here we go, I'll come back to that again. <laughs> yeah, it, it, they, they made a note here. It's about the, around the Mediterranean. 
Um, so like I said, this this first lesson here is a video lesson and it's on soft pastels. So they're, they're drawing something with wheels with soft pastels to get to learn how to use the, that medium. But it's not, like obviously this is a picture of a fire truck, so it's not really related to ancient world. You could encourage them to do something related to the ancient world if you want to, but that's not fully the point of that lesson. It then moves on to the lesson for art and caves and it has an introduction just like in volume one. And then it actually has a picture of something that you talk about for a picture study, again, just like in volume one, and then an example of art. So we did this one, um, and what is great is actually this ties in, there are a bunch of books you can find, picture books that if you look in my early man unit study, I will link that here. We read um, one or two books on this um, cave in France that I am not sure exactly how to pronounce so i'm not going to try right now um but so we did this in conjunction in so we did this in conjunction with reading those books uh which was fantastic i'll also show you a picture of the art my kids did with this project we had a really good time this again is slab building we actually i skipped this this video lesson and just did it with the kids in the actual lesson um so that is an option my kids do like the video lessons um but I was also aware of how much clay I have. So I'll come back to that note in a minute. This is a statue from the Near East. And then it goes through um, Minoan. This is the bull jumping um, painting from Crete. They did animal paintings. Um, you will see in my Ancient Egypt unit video, um, I talk about these lessons here that we did. I, I combined these two lessons. So we read both the introductions and we looked at both of the pictures and asked the questions, but then we just did one, each child did one mural uh, where I had them uh, work, paint on the wall. So sometimes I don't follow things exactly. I will talk about that more in a few minutes as well. This is so cool because it's a bass relief. I like that a lot. go pinch clay method I did this one with them I really liked doing that and then we so we made the pinch pots and then came back after they dried and uh, painted them and then we haven't gotten to these yet I know my daughter's gonna love that <laughs> she loves anything to do with horses so um, you can pretty much bet that if there's an option to do a horse, she will. I'm excited to come back to this as well, paper mosaic. That looks really fun. So I just wanted to give you a full view of that. Again, there's objectives in the back for each of the lessons. So if you are in a state, maybe that um, you're homeschooling in a state that requires you know, more information or for you to follow something specifically for an art curriculum, then that would be really helpful. I can't really think of one that would need something that specific, but also if you're doing it in like a co-op or that kind of situation, maybe that would be great. Um, again, I wanted to show you the supplies needed. So thing to know about this volume and subsequent volumes is I believe all of the volumes after volume one assume that you have the basic set from volume one. So you can refer back to what that was. Um, so that's the starter pack materials. And then you do need some household items that they list here. And sometimes I don't have exactly what they, they want, but exactly what they list, but I can always find something that'll work. And I did also get this pack. So it comes with the Prismacolor. And again, um, I'm having them share these and we just were able to break these into two pieces for the kids to use, which worked pretty well because they're pretty long. Um, but again, if you have more than two kids, you might need multiples of this. It can be, you can just find this separately though um, at an art store online. And then this is the Marblex clay. And I actually, this is the kind that I used before doing this program as well. My kids love using this clay. I usually get the gray. You can also find it in red. And then this is really, really helpful. Um, this is just, it's actually like a cheese cutter, but this is what you use to cut the pieces off of the clay. And it's really hard to do without this. So if you don't have one of these, I recommend getting one. So here's the thing about the clay is from my past experience, I know that if you 
hold on to the clay and don't use it for a while, it hardens um, because it is self-hardening clay. Now it is stored. Now it is stored in plastic and so it does last a little bit, but if you leave it for like six months or more, it's probably gonna be at least partially hardened. So I didn't want to order extra clay. So what I did is I just, I got the set and I had one of these come with our set and we actually used the whole thing during our first part of the year. And then I just ordered this recently um, to continue our year. So if you have more than one kid, that is what I would recommend. I wouldn't recommend getting um, multiples at a time just in case you don't use it fast enough. So those are our looks inside the books and at the material. Now I wanna to talk to you a little bit more about how I'm using it. So how do I use this? Now, if you've watched some of my other videos, you may know that I don't generally use things exactly as recommended. I once heard a quote by Julie Bogart that said, you use the curriculum, the curriculum doesn't use you, and that is my mantra. This material is designed to be used two books over the course of the year. Each of the books has 18 lessons in it. So it's if you use one a week, that's 36 weeks, two books for the course of the year, which is great, and if that's how you wanna use it, that'd be perfect for you. However, that's not really how I've been using it. Um, I wanted to do volume one because I thought it'd be a great introduction to my kids and really just get them exposed to different concepts of art. However, I didn't feel like I needed to do all of those lessons before we did the ancient ones. And I wanted to tie the ancient art projects into the units I've been doing for ancient history. So I purchased both the books and the kits. And so I got both books and I looked through the ancient art book and I actually thought through and planned out when we were going to be doing each of the ancient art lessons as corresponds to our ancient history unit studies and just sometimes not always, always a unit, but ancient history in general. And then I took the um, volume one, which is the general art volume, and I'm just, we're just going through it kind of at our own pace from the beginning. That I feel like it's important to go through those lessons in order, but I don't think it's a bad thing to also be doing the ancient art mixed in with it. So we may or may not actually get through all of volume one this year and we'll see how it goes. It also might be something that we do more during the summer when we're not doing as much like book heavy school. Maybe we can even take it outside. So that's how I'm using it in general. When I do use it, I do go through the lesson as directed reading the introduction and we look at the picture and talk about it and then we do the project. Um, but I'm just not doing it on a weekly basis and I, I think I'm going mostly in order with the Ancients book because it does go in chronological order as I am, um, but there might be a couple that we've, we're skipping or, or skipping around a little bit. The other one I'm going in order, but just when we feel like doing it, basically, or when I feel like we're, we'll fit it in. I like to do pros and cons when I do these review videos, so here are my pros and cons for Artistic Pursuits Kindergarten through Third Grade Curriculum. So my pros are that it is really a get and go curriculum for you. So if you are not sure about art and what you wanna do and how to teach it, but you wanna make sure that your children or your students are getting a good exposure to art, this would be perfect for you. So just start with volume one, or you could get volume one and two together, and you can get the, the kits with all the materials. So you have everything you need and just start, just follow the book. So that is a beautiful thing. But it also works for those of you who might be a little bit more into art and already know what you're doing, um, but need, but just want a little bit more structure or want to make sure you're not missing anything. Or maybe you're like me and you love history and you're looking for something to tie into your history studies. This program works for all of those situations. So it is great in that way. And that for me is a pro. Uh, a pro is that it can work for a variety of ages. So if you are homeschooling, um, many of us that homeschool have multiple children of different ages. And so this is designed for kindergarten through third grade. And it really does work well for those ages, as I can tell so far. Again, I'm doing it with a first grader and a preschooler. So what I would say is I think it could work for even broader age, age range. Um, I'm not, I wouldn't recommend trying this with a two-year-old per se, um, but many of us have preschoolers, kindergartens, first graders, second graders, third graders, Depending on the child, you might even be able to work um, with a fourth or fifth grader with the same program as well as in art, children do things to their own abilities. Uh, Artistic Pursuits does also have programs for 
the higher age ranges. So if you do have multiple children that are older than third grade, you can check that out as well. Pro to me is that they actually have the kits with the materials. Now I will say that those, they are a little expensive, but the materials are really good quality. And if you're somebody like me who has art materials around and does that anyway, for me, it was worth it to just have the bundle to have everything we need um, without having to search for it um, in pieces. So that's great. Another pro is the video lessons. My kids just love getting video lessons. I don't know, maybe it's because we limit their screen time and it's a little bit of screen time. Um, but it's also just not mom presenting every lesson, even though I present a lot of them and I do work with them a lot of the times. It's sometimes nice to have that inject a little bit of somebody else in there, uh, guiding them along. And it's something that you can go back and watch multiple times if you want to see how to do it again. Um, so I think with art, something like art, sometimes when you have directions on a page and you're trying to like look through it, it's not always clear, but the video really makes it clear. And they also include some other things in the videos. It's not just the lessons. Sometimes, um, I think with clay, they were talking about how, where they get the clay and, and things like that come, come into the videos as well. So the videos is another one of my pros. The history. Did I mention the history already? I'm going to mention it again because I love that this program goes chronologically through history. Um, next year we will be doing medieval and Renaissance. And so books three, uh, book three is the middle ages. Book four is the Italian Renaissance. And I believe book five might be like the Northern country Renaissance. I'm going to look into it. Um, but we're definitely going to do books three and four and I, I might delve in, I might dip into some of the later books as well. We'll see, but they also go into American art and other things. So, um, this is all linked below. So you can always click on that link and peruse if you have more specific questions. If you have specific questions about how I'm using it, feel free to ask in the comments below. I love to answer all of your questions. I think those are all of my pros. I just really like this program. I had to struggle. I struggled to come up with a con. My con would be it's not free, but really it's a great resource and people put a lot of effort and, um, effort into making a good quality product. So really it shouldn't be free. Um, just, just to be fair, um, the materials can get a little expensive. So that would be my con is the price of it. It might not be accessible to everybody. However, I would say that if you are somebody who feels like you could maybe afford the book, like one book a year, but couldn't maybe afford the materials, I believe you could find cheaper options for the materials online and again have children share so that that is an option out there for you um but if you're interested in getting an art curriculum i think this is a really good quality one and i would highly recommend it as i said we are continuing to use it this year and i will be purchasing and i will be purchasing more volumes to do with my children next year when i will have a kindergartner and a second grader one last thing, I thought you might want to see how I store our art supplies. So it's not particularly pretty, it's not particularly pretty right now. Um, but I have these two um, plastic bins and they are on high shelves in our dining area since that's where we do most of our work. If, you, if we go down, you'll see some calendar peg dolls and all sorts of stuff there. And um, it's just divided. The top has paint supplies, which includes our watercolor crayons, some watercolor paints, other paints, and a bunch of paintbrushes that are all falling out of their container right now. And then the bottom one has clay and other miscellaneous supplies. And then to the right here, I keep our books, um, our art books, as well as our um, paper. And here I actually have, um, I got these little folders to store the kids work in for the year. Each has one, but not all that fit in there. So then some is stored there. So that's, uh, and then you can see here a caddy, which, um, there was actually a racer that an eraser that came with the kit, so I think that's probably in there. I didn't I didn't locate it for the video, um, but that's how I store my art supplies. I forgot to mention that both the starter kit and the ancient history kit came in uh, nice artistic pursuits um, cloth bags, and so I seem to have misplaced them. We've got cloth bags all over the house, um, but if you wanted to, you could store the books and supplies in those. So that is also an option. Um, but if you just want another idea, this is what I do. I hope that was all helpful for you. If you have questions, again, let me know in the comments below. Make sure you give this a thumbs up if you liked it to let YouTube know. And subscribe for my channel if you haven't already to see more videos. Until next time, I will talk to you later, friends. Happy art making!